Hey y'all, I'm Nikki. And I'm Selena, and this is Sweet Tea TV, a podcast by two Southerners exploring and celebrating the better parts of Southern culture on TV and in entertainment. In our first season, we'll dive into the iconic show Designing Women, a series far ahead of its time, following four strong, brazen women right here in our backyard, Atlanta. Join us as we break down each episode and discuss what they got right, what they got wrong, and how this show holds 30 plus years later. Come on, let's get into it. Well, so I have a question for you, Nikki. Oh, no. Should we tell them? Should we tell these listeners, these listeners that we hope will one day come, our secret shame? Our secret shame. Which you are, one? Do you, I'm like, do you know what our secret shame Which is? Which one? There's so many. <laughs> well, I'm afraid what might come out. I just had like 10 go through my head. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just burst this secret shame in case you tell on us for real. Neither one of us really drink sweet tea. Oh, you're going to tell that one? Yeah. So, you know, our podcast namesake. The Sweet Tea and TV podcasters drink no sweet tea. No. And so like, I never have really, like, I don't know if we've, I know we both have established that we don't, but like, is there a reason that you don't? Um, other, other than recognizing the danger of sugar. Um, you know, I grew up Mm. as a kid, I grew up, we drank sweet tea. Probably my mom made a gallon every few days. We had sweet tea in the refrigerator all the time. Do you, have you ever seen the big blue pitchers with the white lid that twists around? Classic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the picture my mom made tea in. I think I learned to make tea when I was probably, I don't know, my mom would correct me, but maybe like eight, nine or 10. I wasn't very old when I learned how to make it. But yeah, I think just as you grow up and people start talking about sugar, you're sort of like, oh, it's not so great for me. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, it's definitely sugary sweet. I think for me, it was just like never a thing that my family offered, which which oh. I guess, yeah, I, I don't want to expose myself as a bad Southerner because that's really what I want us to talk a little bit about, uh-huh. like, so that we can, you know, introduce ourselves so that people can have an understanding of why we're doing this thing in the first place. Right. But, like, one side of my family was a Coca-Cola family. I, mm. I mean, I'm not saying that we were, like, running marathons or anything. We were just drinking something else that was sugary sweet. <laughs> and then... My side of the family, uh, my mom's side of the family, they were iced tea drinkers, not sweetened or unsweetened, as we call it in the South, which means nothing anywhere else, by the way. So as you know. (laughs) It's just tea. uh, Yeah. They're like, so tea. Uh, This was something I ran into in the restaurant industry, by the way. Uh, So, you know, I mean, I do think it's delicious and I like mine with lots of lemon. So if you do ever drink tea, do you like a lot of lemon? So it's, I think it's an acquired taste, something I've acquired over time. So I will occasionally drink an unsweet tea, like out at a restaurant. Um, and I do, I just like that. And, and I know there are issues with dirtiness of lemons at restaurants, but I, I, I don't know. I still put them in. But when I was growing up, we didn't put lemons in tea. And I will tell you that um, we tried sun tea one time. Have you ever oh, made yeah. sun tea? Not good. It is oh. not the same as Louisiana. Was it also like bottled though? Oh, I don't know. We made it. I mean, we literally took the tea bags, took the water, put it outside, and let it, I don't know, marinate in the sun. <laughs> I guess that's called. You put it outside. Yeah. Oh, maybe I don't know what this is. Okay. I don't know. You're teaching me something. Oh, you know what? I do think, though, there's a brand called Sun Tea or something. But this was like a, a way of making tea. But we only did that a couple times because it's terrible. Um, but just like, you know, the Louisiane in the pot. My mom had a sweet, my mom had a sweet tea pot. She had a certain pot that was stained from the tea because that's the pot we made tea in. So yeah. we, we took it pretty seriously. Okay, well, so you've got some cred. You've got I some real cred so. there. So, well, let me. That's a good. That's a good segue because I thought what you know, like before we even get to designing women, and you know, because this is like the first time that we're sort of setting up who we are, what we're doing. You know, I, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about our relationship to the South, like. We said in our nice little beautiful canned intro that we're Southern, right. but like, can you prove it? Uh, so I, will you start us off, if you're willing, and yeah. share with us maybe some highlights of, let's call it your Southern resume. 
Oh, I like this. I like this. Yeah. I think the most important part of my Southern resume is that I was born in a Southern state. So I was born in South Carolina, like my parents before me and my grandparents before them. So we are all South Carolinians. But I've also lived in North Carolina and now Georgia, which is where you and I both call home. I lived in Pennsylvania for a very brief time as a kid, which is where you will quickly learn that not everyone knows what sweet tea is. Um, And Mm -hmm. so maybe I I don't have much of a Southern accent, I think, which people will notice right away. Maybe that's where it went. I lived there when I was like seven or eight. So maybe it just disappeared when I was there. Um, But fun fact. You left it there. I left it there. That's right. Packed everything up and left my accent. Um, But fun fact, we moved to Georgia during the 96 Olympics. So when they were hosting the Olympics, we were bringing our bags in and moving in. So I consider myself a pretty well-established Georgia peach. It's a little hard to leave behind, you know, my South Carolina identity. Um, But, you know, I went to a state university here in Georgia. Um, I have a deep appreciation for country music, which um, incidentally was not always true. Um, my, My mother does not appreciate Southern music country music at all. Um, But I really got into it in college. Uh, I love the weather. I love how kind and neighborly people tend to be in the South. So there's a lot I love here. Um, And I love exactly what we were just talking about. When you go into a restaurant and ask for sweet tea, they don't think you're crazy. Um, And, you know, I think one fun, another fun fact about me is that I love the South so much that I named my daughter Carolina after my home state. So she is forever called Carolina. But her name is actually <laughs> Carolina. Um, and that's that was, you know, in homage to my home state. Well, does it matter that now I call every Carolina Carolina? <laughs> I've ruined it forever for you. It's a, Carolina is such a beautiful name. And I appreciate that everybody tries to call her that. <laughs> but honestly, it's just Carolina. And more honestly, it was inspired by a country song. I heard a lyric in a country song when I was pregnant. And um, that's just... I decided I love that name for her. So that's how much I love and appreciate the South. But that said, you know, I do think that the good has to be balanced with the bad. And so um, there's some not so great parts of being from the South that are um, tough to come to terms with and to reconcile with a deep love for it. Um, So I think I've just really tried to um, take away the things that we can appreciate and take away the lessons that we need to learn. And at the end of the day, you know, it's my this is my home. I love my home. So that's my, that, I don't know. That's my Southern resume. Is that enough? Do you think that qualifies me? Well, I think that helps with the accent. So <laughs> It's I, all you about know. balance, right? <laughs> well, we are a, a listening show, so it's possible that people might be like, she's from the South. What? So <laughs> I, you know, uh, sim- similar in the fact, you know, uh, I've, well, I've spent my whole life in Georgia. I was born here. I was raised here. Uh, I've actually lived only in or around the metro Atlanta area my entire life. Uh, That's crazy. I think in, I, yeah, it's very, it's all very exciting. Um, I do travel. <laughs> um, I think in contrast to what you're saying, though, like I'm actually not really much of a. Okay, this is really not fair. I, I I'm okay with country music. Like it's fine. It's not my favorite. I do love me some Patsy Cline. Mm-hmm. I'll take it way back. Yeah. Um, so I do like, that's fine. I won't go all down that, but just to say that there are, I, I'm not really a sports fan, so mm-hmm. that's not really a connection point for you and I, but like, right. you know, uh, this is, this is my home too. It's, it's where most of my friends are. It's mm-hmm. where, except for a few ones that I miss and love Ashley in Ireland. And then I, and Taylor in Kentucky, uh, my, husband and I met here, obviously, if I haven't left the metro Atlanta area. And, you know, we were married here in Georgia and Dahlonega. We made memories and a life together. Uh, You know, most of my family, except for my dad, love you, dad, uh, not here, but in Texas, we'll get into Texas. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. (laughs) That's a whole nother Uh, thing. That's a whole nother thing. Uh, But, you know, so I, I think similar to what you were saying, there's a lot of awesome things about the South, even though I may not relate with the ones that I think people on like the outside looking in mm, or like, uh-huh. these are those Southern things, right? The hallmarks of Southernism. Uh, uh, that I can't think of a better way to put it. And so, you know, I, for me, I think mine might look a little different, but uh, it's certainly something that I hope that we can share with uh, listeners 
you know, who decide to tune in. And we hope you'll tune in. Uh, you know, just Please. a full disclosure. Yeah, I want more for and from the South sometimes. I think that's what I'm hearing you say a little yeah. bit in what you were saying, too. I feel frustrated when it's not measuring up. But I'm also going to be the first person to come to its defense. Mm -hmm. When I feel like people are judging it unfairly or without like some level of understanding. And because my mantra sort of is like, I can talk about my mama, but you can't talk about my mama. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the South. Amen. Yeah. So that is, that's pretty much it in a nutshell for my Southern res resume. I'm also told it's not important who, but I'm also told that I slightly have an accent. A little bit. So. Of, it's a little bit of an accent. It's it's mild. M a mild. lilt. <laughs> it's mild plus. It's a lilt. But that's uh, what's, I think that's what's so funny about how we've bonded over our quote unquote Southernism, because I'm the one that sounds the least Southern. And I'm the one that's like, oh, I love a large front porch in the summer and a glass of sweet tea. And, and you're like, I, I want so much more from the South. But also, don't mess with my mama. You know, I, I think yeah. it's it's the kind of funny counterbalance, I feel like, between the two of us. I also like a front porch. <laughs> <laughs> I have a heart. <laughs> so. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> but I, I totally get what you're saying. So I think, well, that is absolutely where I wanted to go next, if that's okay. It's I'm like sort of reading your mind today. I know, and I really like it because it's helpful. <laughs> uh, like, we could just go ahead and launch in to say that the reason we know each other is because we work together. Yeah. S so we just got off work and I'm tired. Yeah. I know so. we gotta. We have to figure out the ideal time to record because it is. It's hard finding the right time when you work full time during the day and you're trying to kind of counterbalance this fun nighttime project. It is, and that's how much we love my grandma, our listener, um, <laughs> because we are going to do this even when we're tired. That's the kind of commitment that comes from what we do in our <laughs> daily jobs. Yeah. So I'm I'm just kidding too, because my grandma will never figure out how to use. <laughs> And she will when you go down there and set it up for her. Right, right. That's what it's going to take. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. That's your commitment to the listener. That That is my commitment <laughs> to the listener. We will come listener. to your house and set up downloading our podcast if you promise to listen. Yeah, and That's like I don't want to take that too far, but that yeah, just just in general, like I don't care if you're like here or maybe you're somewhere like Prague, and you just really need us to to come and set set you up. Like that's the kind all of expenses first, paid, of course. Yes, that's the kind of first class service that we offer. <laughs> also, um, we want to fly first class on the way there, so just keep that in mind as you're budgeting our flights to Prague to come right, set your yes. stuff up. That will be very helpful. <laughs> you know, I one thing I want to say, too, is, uh, well, actually, let me put it this way. So we're both from the South. We both work together. And we've known each other for a decade. Mm, so hurts. a little more. <laughs> we were so young. When That's we true. Met. I thought that I was old. That was stupid. <laughs> That'll teach you. In 10 years, I can also look back and I'll be like, I was so young. I, I wish I'd realized my mid thirties, you know? <laughs> so, but here we are. And, and, you know, and so we both have like kind of these, I, you know, I think they're, they're like these Southernisms that are in common. We contrast a little bit. So I think we can both bring some different perspectives. Is there anything else, Johnny on the spot, because that's what I'm going to do to you all the time during this podcast. Anything else that you think that maybe the listener should know about you and me, our relationship before we move on? No, I think you covered it. I mean, knowing that we've known each other for a long time, I think is important because, um, we we have bonded over Southernism and also our love of pop culture and TV for a long time. And so that's really the genesis of this podcast is just kind of an opportunity for us um, to talk about the things that we love and kind of combine them into something that maybe is a little educational for the listener. Maybe we learn some things along the way. Um, so I think I think you're, everything you've shared so far is probably the most relevant, but I just um, – 
I think for people to know that this is this project is it, this has been a long time coming for us, and this is something we're really excited about. So um, hopefully, others will get in on our enthusiasm. Yeah, I like that. That's that's good. I I also wanted to talk. Just we can we can do this uh, as quickly, or we can go on for as long as you want. You don't have anything to do, right? Uh, <laughs> I thought that it might be helpful too, just to talk a little bit, like as we start this journey, because, I th- you know, we're going to go down this path of, uh, you know, digesting one episode after the next of designing women, and so, I think for both of us, we know it's been a long time since we've really watched these episodes particularly if you're talking about like consecutively, so um, if ever, so I. Yeah, so I think, well, I think, I think I have before. So, but, you know, it's been a long time. So with that in mind, I thought it would be nice for us to go ahead and establish as of today, how we feel about the show and our relationship to it. You know, what it meant to us as the designing women we knew before. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's been a really, really, really long time since I've watched any of it. And I certainly did not watch every episode. Um, and, you know, I've had this conversation with my my mom recently because she loves Designing Women. This was a favorite show of hers um, years ago. And so she has seen every episode. She watches them on repeat now the way I have like my own shows that I watch on repeat. So she can remember every single plot point. She can remember every single um you know, interaction between characters, when they shifted, cast, all of those sorts of things. My mom, my mom really knows. And I don't remember the show in that way at all. Um, I can remember her watching it and I remember her making references to it, but like plot points and detailed character stories, I don't know those things. So for me, this is almost an entirely fresh rewatch. And I feel like you're more familiar with it than I am. Yeah, so like, look at that nice compare and contrast again. I'd be hard pressed to remember like all of the individual plot lines, but I definitely remember some. And some of the memories of it are very vivid. I think it's because as we get into it, some of the show is just kind of quirky. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, uh, which I love some good quirk, but like, you know, what I can definitely recall, if not individual plot lines, is loving it. I, I love yeah. the characters, uh, all of them, but especially Julia. And, you know, I I think characters like hers or to skip around a little bit, even like Murphy Brown or Mm. Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld, you know, I think watching them on television as the only five-year-old watching these sitcoms for whatever reason, like it just sort of shaped me to some extent. You Mm -hmm. know, I grew up watching these women buck the system. Right. I watched them stand their ground. I watched them run companies, run with the boys. And, you know, I think that really stuck with me because I didn't really know it before. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know that was something that used to not be the case. Right. Uh, and on reflection, like, you know, as a 30 something now, to have seen Southern women not portrayed as soft, spo- excuse me, soft spoken or simple minded you know, are subservient, but strong and successful. Like that is something that just really left an impression on me. Oh, wow. You went deep. Wow. You went deep with your appreciation. Well, that's what Julia does. Oh, yeah. That's what Julia does. So I think like the last thing that I was hoping we could do it if this is okay. Cause you know, we got to make sure we're in agreement for folks who don't know we're, we're like not together right now because there's a pandemic. I feel like that's an important (laughs) thing. People should know. Yeah. Good, good call. That is an important thing for people to know that we are not actually recording in the same room and we have not normal times. We haven't been quote unquote in the same room since last year. So it's been a long time since we've even been in the same room. Um, we've seen each other like on walks and things like that where we've conceptualized some of this. But yeah, we haven't been in the same room. I think that is a – you were just saying you've never known a bef- before kind of on TV. Maybe we'll never know a before on podcasting, and this is the only way we'll ever have known to do it. But yeah, we're doing it virtual. We'll be learning a lot then. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we are learning a lot. 
Yeah. And I think we've talked about this to some extent, Nikki, but if I can just throw it to you to talk a little bit, maybe about a little bit about why we're doing this. Yeah. And just so the audience kind of has a crisp understanding of what it is that we're after, because we are sweet tea and TV. We're not designing women. Right. Women, you know, so, uh, and, 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 you know, just some of the things that we're hoping to achieve, like designing women and then broader. Yeah. I think for you and me, and, um, you can correct me if I'm, I'm saying anything wrong. I think for us, fun is really kind of the way we're approaching this show. That's if you had to have ground rules, that would be our number one ground rule. Um, so we do work full-time jobs. I think we mentioned that earlier. Um, and, we just don't always get to be as creative as we want to be. So we've always been kind of trying to think of a fun, creative project we could do. I think the fact that we bonded over the South, the fact that there are so many amazing shows on TV and amazing movies that have shown the South kind of in Hollywood. Um, we've always had fun kind of picking those apart and thinking about um, how true is it to our experience? And it felt like that was a little bit of a gap, something maybe we could fill. You know, our expertise is TV and our own Southernism. That seems fair enough, right? We're experts in that. So it felt like maybe we could share that. And we want this to be fun for listeners. We want to share the best parts of the South that we love and the parts that um, we're proud of, maybe introduce people who aren't as familiar with those things. Um, And I think just at the end of the day, this last year, we alluded to this earlier, has been really challenging for a lot of people. And we really want this show to be sort of a fun little escape um, where we get to just chat about designing women. Over time, I think we would ideally like to explore other shows and other um, movies and things like that. And again, provide that unique perspective. Um, So we want to kind of dig into the shows a little bit, offer that, um, and then look at it through kind of the 2021 lens and see how things hold up. Designing Women is an older show, so it'll be kind of cool to see how cultural things that were addressed during that time and then offer our perspective. Obviously, we're also women. So I feel like we offer kind of that perspective as well, um, which will be interesting. I think one thing that we have talked about quite a bit, um, because this is something that's really important to both of us, is we can't just conveniently skip over the fact that the South has a complicated and challenging history. We can't um, whitewash the history and just pretend things didn't happen or overlook certain things. Um, So we we want our show to be fun, but sometimes that means we're going to have to shine a light on things that maybe are less fun. We don't want to just skip over those for the sake of skipping over them. Um, I, again, this is a fresh watch for me, so I don't know how much Designing Women addresses these issues. Um, but I, I know, Selena, you and I have talked about, based on your recollection, there are some tough issues they dig into. Um, yeah. And I would imagine that any Southern show worth its weight and salt would, would cover some of those things. Um, so I think we... We want to address those things and we may have to get serious sometimes and really say, you know, if something's not right, we want to call it out and say, here, this isn't right. And that's why it wasn't right. And maybe we can all learn a little bit as we go. Um, And then I think just one other thing I would say on that front is that pie in the sky, if we were shooting for the stars, which, you know, sometimes we we are, um, as we talk about this podcast, we would love to bring representative and diverse voices to the table um, to talk about those experiences that maybe we're not qualified. Like, we just gave our Southern resume. We can speak from that experience, but there are plenty of other experiences and life experiences that are addressed in TV and in movies and just in culture in general that we're not qualified to speak to. So we want to make sure that to whatever extent we have the ability to give those voices a platform and a chance to share that experience, we want to share that. Well, I think that sums it all up. <laughs> did I did I get all did I get the high points? I feel like just at the end of the day, it's we, we want to entertain, we want to have fun, um, but we want to do it in a responsible way, and um, we want to make sure that whatever we're we're sharing and whatever we're talking about is responsible and. Um, covers the important stuff. I think we also want to take the opportunity to talk about the stuff we love. Like if there's ever an opportunity to talk about food, we would love to talk about food, right? (laughs) Yeah. Just (laughs) open the door. Just Just say pie. All they have to do is just like walk into a restaurant. We're like, did somebody say biscuits? (laughs) Let's talk biscuits. Um, I think, uh, you know, we get back to me not having an accent. I think there are a lot of really charming turns of phrase in the South that 
I didn't really inherit. I say y'all gratuitously. I use that word every day millions of times. But things like ain't and over yonder and cattywampus, those are real true words that people in my family and not like my great grandfather, but like cousins. These are words they actually use, contemporaries of mine. Um, and I would love to explore those a little bit. And then if there's any other like little fun facts, Designing Women, are the first show we're getting into, um, is based in Atlanta, which conveniently, we're from the metro Atlanta area. So any other fun facts that we could share along the way about our home, I think would be fun. I love that. And I'm so excited to do it and to really like uh, – to take you guys down some serious rabbit holes. It's okay. Nikki's going to constrain me. <laughs> I don't know. I might be right there with you. I'm a rabbit holer too sometimes. I'm the Google well, rabbit holer. Hopefully somebody will pull us back here or there. <laughs> we, need so, a, we need a responsible adult around here. Right, right. But I, I yeah, so I'm super looking forward to uh, you know, those opportunities to not just explore designing women, but things outside the bounds of designing women. I mean, we really thinking of that as a jumping off point. Yeah. Uh, I know that this whole segment has felt like probably a little indulgent maybe to a listener, but I just know when I, as a podcast listener myself, uh, you are too, Nikki. I, you know, I, if I'm going to tune into something, I need to know who I'm listening yeah. to and, uh, you know, what we're looking to achieve together, mm-hmm. because you really are kind of going on a journey. Um, it's not just like, it's not, I, I, I get where I feel invested when mm-hmm. I'm listening to a podcast, like really, really invested. Um, and, and so I hope that, <laughs> I hope that our listeners feel very invested too. Um, <laughs> and I hope and they like us. Yeah, well, that would be helpful. I mean, (laughs) don't sound desperate. (laughs) Sorry. Please listen and like me. Please like me. Please. No. But um, but anyways, but thank you so much for this uh, indulgence. We are going to separate this out into a separate episode then where we actually dig into the pilot of Designing Women. Uh, that's where we'll break it down, uh, kind of act by act and, you know, give you our Southern perspectives. Uh, and we're just going to take it from there. So join us. Come listen. <laughs> yeah. Be my friend. Yes. Like me. Yes. <laughs> On Facebook. All right. Well, we'll see you around the bend at episode one. All right. Let's do episode one. Let's do it.